Welcome to our daily Forex market analysis call for June 23rd, 2017. Just a quick disclaimer before we get started. This is for education purposes only. If you have questions about your individual investment needs, I recommend you talk to your investment advisor. Okay, so we'll start off by taking a look at our Forex factory here. Um, in terms of data, not a whole lot of data. We did see retail sales number that was very strong for the Canadian dollar. And as a result of that, we saw Canadian dollar um, actually strengthen quite a bit. So dollar CAD was down today. And we had unemployment claims that were pretty much in line with expectation. But that's, that's it. Not much after that. And in terms of our calendar for tomorrow. Tomorrow we have a whole bunch of data coming out, especially in the um, session in the morning here in the London session. The PMI numbers are important numbers, especially for Germany here because that's um, Germany is one of the main uh, producers in Europe. So that's those numbers are important. The flash numbers here, manufacturing PMI and services PMI for all of uh, Europe will be important here as well for the Euro. And then in the London, sorry, in the New York session, not much news, just the CPI, um, which is the inflation number for Canada. So Bank of Canada actually mentioned um, looking into monetary policy and um, potentially sort of starting to cut back on that. Now, CPI numbers are, so retail sales numbers, CPI numbers, these are important data points, uh, just like for the US, Fed looks at these numbers, Bank of Canada will look at these numbers as well. So if these numbers are coming out positive, that means economy is doing well, and they'll be more likely to raise rates. So if the inflation number, CPI number comes out positive for the Canadian dollar, that means that um, we are likely to see see Canadian dollar strengthen further and we may see dollar CAD drop. So this is an important number. If it comes out negative, we'll see the opposite of that. We may see dollar CAD go up. So very important number to pay attention to here. And then we do have PMI numbers for US here as well at 945 and new home sales numbers. So again, those are those will be important. But that's it. We just kind of go into FOMC members speaking after that. So light data tomorrow. So let's move on to the charts here. In terms of our in terms of our charts here, we are range bound. This we are looking at Euro here. So Euro has been range bound. If we take that out of the way, so see how Euro has been range bound between 111.80 and 111.20. We have been going back and forth at this level. Um, now, very, very small candle today, not much action. So now we are, we're going to treat this as a range bound market. So if price comes up to 111.80, we could see price turn around, turn back down from there. If it comes into 111.20, it may pop up from there. So that's the, it is completely range bound. Now, if we do see positive uh, PMI numbers come out tomorrow, that could change things. So this is where I would, um, so we would need to pay attention to data. But other than that, there's not much that's driving this pair at the moment. It's just um, just going sideways for now. So let's go down to our one hour. So as we can see here, uh, price did go up into this 1200 level. But other than that, we have been trading in this pretty narrow range here. So in so right now, that's what I would be looking for, uh, price to break out of this range one way or another. So price cannot stay in this range forever. Um, so if it does go higher, the second level I'd be watching would be this 1200 level. See if price will go beyond that. But on the downside here, this 1120 level, which is also our S2 level, um, would be the one to watch. And as we can see, these pivot points have, haven't really done much. Um, I mean, they've stayed pretty close. Um, they are not that far off. So this tends to happen when it's a range bound market and price is not reacting. So again, a range bound market, first level for reaction would be the 1180 level, the second one will be 1200 to the upside. But in the bottom here, it's the 1120 level. 
which would be the one we need to pay attention to. Um, and once it breaks this level, 1120, then we have uh, further down, we have this one, which we haven't been to in quite some time, 1080 level. So we will draw a near term range and then slightly wider range. So near term range is this one right here, slightly wider range will be 1200 to the upside and 1080 to the downside. So that's Euro. Let's take a look at Pound. Pound has, um, has not done much at this point. So this is where we are, very, very small candle for the day. And this is what we saw with pretty much everything across the board here, very, very small candle. So very neutral at the moment. Now in for the British pound here, 12700 level, this top level would be the important one to pay attention to, to the upside. Um, right now, it could go either way. It looks like it wants to push down lower, but that uh, the, the liquidity has been quite thin. The moves were very, very jittery today. So not, uh, not a lot of useful information from our daily close. So this, I would say neutral for this one. The first target to the downside here would be 126.40 level, which is the bottom of this pin. And then the second one will be 125.80. Um, so that's what we are looking at, looking at our charts here. This is the four hours, so didn't really do much today. It's just going sideways. Here's our one hour. See how narrow this range was? All three sessions, we price could not move at all. 32 pips um, with three sessions combined. So this is not normal for the British pound. Um, so it's not going to stay there forever. It will come out somewhere. Like it will break down either to the upside or to the or move out to the downside. So that's what we'll have to watch out for right now. Uh, first target is 1240 level, the bottom of this pin, which is also our S2 level. And then second one, 125.88. But we just have to be open to this one as well and trade it both ways. If the price breaks above 127, then we are going further into this, the pin here, and we'll have to be ready to take that. But for now, no direction, no real uh, direction. This one here, railroad tracks, reversal signal. So dollar CAD um, went into resistance here, did not manage to go up. So we have seen another move to the downside. Now we are bearish on this, very solid daily close. Now again, CPI numbers tomorrow, could change this completely. However, based on the daily close, we are bearish. And in this case, we could see a move somewhat like this, and then another drop. So the target to the downside would be 131.65 here, but the initial target prior to that will be this one right there. So 132.00 will be the first target. And below that, we're looking at a 131.60-ish level. Okay, so going into our four hour, uh, this is where we are. So we are looking for a bit of a push to the upside into 132.80 level. So it could do that move that I just talked about. We may see one of these and then a drop. So watch out for that. Or if it doesn't pull back that much, we may just see a pull back into the pivot and then a drop. So if we get closer to price here on the one hour, that's our pivot right there. Um, and that is a 132.73. So 132.63 level, this support and resistance area kind of pulling it down a little bit, right into this pen. So we, we may see a push to the upside there. So kind of like that, and then a drop. So that can happen, but looks like price has that downward momentum. So we are making lower highs, lower highs here. And as a result, we are likely to see the price go down. Just keep in mind the CPI numbers, but bias is definitely to the downside here. Aussie, Aussie, um, it's a nice daily pin bar. 
and at this point, but we're not seeing a lot of movement in this. It has come down only about 100 pips in one, two, three, four days. It's only moved 100 pips. And that's not a lot of movement. 25 pips a day is a very, very small move. Now, a part of the reason for this is dollar cad is moving lower. So usually the commodities kind of tend to move together. So this is moving in the opposite direction of dollar cad. So because Canadian dollar is so bullish, this one's not as bearish because the commodities are getting lifted up here. Um, in this case, based on the daily though, just looking at purely technical analysis, this looks bearish. However, we could see price pull back up. And this could just come from the strength from, let's say Canadian dollar um, or and New Zealand dollar has been a little bit stronger than Aussie as well. So between all three of them, Australian dollar is the weakest. So we could see price push up here um, into 75.70 just because of the strength in commodities and then maybe drop from there. Um, so the, that's the target range that we are looking at, 75.70 to 75.20. So very, very narrow range for this as well. Uh, it will be easier to take um, a short at 75.70 than where it is currently. But the first target is 75.20. If it does break through that, then we are into 7,500. So those, um, those will be the levels to watch for. Here we go, as we can see, we are back into this, this range here now, and it's slowly moving down, and look how close the pivot points are. Generally, they're not that close, so it just shows that the ranges in all the pairs have really narrowed down right now, um, which, mean there's, which means there's not a lot of liquidity in the market. A lot of players are sitting on the sidelines um, and not really doing much. So here we are right in the middle of this range and that's where I was saying that it would be this level here could be a short and this is where we're expecting the price to go to. So that's our 7,500 level. But if it doesn't get that far, then this level right here, 7,520 level will be the first target. But market, it almost looks like market is waiting for something to move it out of the ranges in everything. So the bias is basically to the downside, but I'd rather take it there. New Zealand dollar, it's finally moving lower. Um, not a big move. Um, we are in this range again. Um, I'm viewing this, still keeping this as a range bound, um, range bound move. So we could bring it closer and we could do that essentially. So range of 72, 75 to the upside and then 71, 94 here. So let's say 7,200 to the downside. So about um, 80 pips in there. Here we are. We have been kind of going sideways here. We'll just pull it back. Um, so I'm still short. In this, um, the trade that we took earlier, um, and now I'm just looking for price to come back and test this level, 7,200. So what, uh, what target did we set? I need to check what target we set as our take, take profit. But if it's below 72, I don't think it's going to go that far. So we need to be out of it. I think it may, we may have set it at 7,220. Let me just quickly check where I've put my profit target here. Does somebody have that offhand? Uh, 
Oh, here, uh, take profit 72.25. So that's a, that's a good level. 72.25 is a good level. It was a pivot point level here yesterday. So um, that's a good level for it. So I'm gonna hold it for now. And it looks okay right now. So just looking for it to come back. Essentially, we're looking for it to come back into this support and resistance area, which is which is a good level. It's a pivot point level. It's It's got further room to the downside here as well. So it could go all the way into 7,200. So we're not trying to squeeze everything out of it. Um, however, everything right now is very, very narrow. So do keep that in mind. Um, we are in a bit of profit. So I think I'm about 15 pips in profit or something like that, not a whole amount. So we're just, we'll keep an eye on this is what I'm trying to say. So keep an eye on this. I'm still holding short and I will keep that. So this is the range looking to sell at the, at the top here, 72, um, 80 ish area. And we could go all the way into 7,300. So we will keep that in mind. Um, going back to the pound here. So I'm still in this trade here as well, but, um, so I am, um, I am just outside. So I'll have to check where the entry was on this one. So we've sat in it for a whole day now and it hasn't done anything. So if it hasn't moved, um, it's just better to close the trade out. So I'm going to be looking to see, um, you know, looking to kind of close this out. Um, I'm looking, I'm waiting for this. I am thinking that it might come back into this S1 level, 76.58, or the bottom of this range. See how it held the pivot point for a long time. It did look like uh, at times that it wanted to go below, it just didn't manage and then it has pushed up higher. So once it starts to trickle back into this area, I think I'm just gonna um, close this out. So that's what, um, that's just that one there. Um, I don't like that it sat on top of the daily pivot and did not move lower. Not really thinking that it will really break out to the upside because right now we've got Brexit concerns, we've got the minority government stuff going on. So there isn't a lot of strength, but then again, um, US dollar isn't really doing much. And hence we have seen to like pretty much not, no pair, no currencies doing anything. And hence we are getting these sideways trades at the moment. Okay, pound yen here, very small again, very, very uh, small. This is a neutral pair, not worthwhile trading. Uh, dollar yen again, not worthwhile trading. We still have the range that we marked off from yesterday. Uh, 111.80 and 110.65 level to the bottom. Euro yen, again, we are range bound 124.50 and then 123.50 to the downside. Nothing's going on in the market at the moment. Oh, ugly chart here. Euro cat was a really good move here. So Euro has not moved much, whereas Canadian dollar got very strong. As a result, we saw a big move to the downside here. So this one may continue further, especially if we have, it is into support right now, but if we have, uh, if we get the PMI numbers that are not positive, we are likely to see this move lower from just the technical perspective. This is, um, excuse me, a bearish engulfing candle. So we're looking for further move to the downside. The next target will be 146.70 area right over there. Um, and then we will be back into 146.00. So that's quite far. Um, I would look for 146.60 level as the first target here, um, but it looks biased is to the downside. Euro Aussie here, we have come into resistance 148.20, like we marked off yesterday, kind of went right to it. Um, so now we have a very neutral candle. And in this case, if the commodities stay strong, we could see this drop. So we could see um, 
evening star here. It would be nice if we see an evening star because then that would mean that it would drop further. But at this point, it's neutral, which means we could see a drop in this one. Here we are, as we can see, it's a compressed move, hasn't really done much. So now we're looking for it to basically come on down this way. Even this move here wasn't, see this here is a nicer move. It's, it has momentum to it. This one was just, it looks more compressed. It's just, you know, it's going back and forth like this. That's the sign of a compressed move. So now we could see this move back down. Do keep this in mind though. 47.50 and then 46.20 area to the downside. All right, so that's all I've got. Anything to add or any other pair we need to look at? Okay, if not, we'll call it a wrap then. Okay, perfect. Let's call it a wrap.